you know the surprising number of objects that you use every day are thanks to accidents? Oh, you can see inside me. Oops, I changed the world. This is the story of the X-ray. A life-changing, and for many people life-saving, innovation. Invented by this guy, Wilhelm Rotgen. It wasn't until the 1800s that we would have a revolutionary new way to look inside ourselves without going under the knife. Oh, you can see inside me. There's my heart. Oh dear, I think my liver's a bit knackered. That's too much wine in the liver then. Which, of course, brings us back to this guy. Wilhelm Röntgen is a professor of physics living in Germany, and he's studying the brand new science of cathode rays. He's got what's called the Crookes tube. It's essentially a tube of glass that, when he runs electricity through it, beams of electrons stream from the negative end, the cathode, to the anode. Wilhelm is fascinated by these glowing tubes when he notices something strange. He's darkened the room so he can see things well, and he's got the Crookes tube going, but it's, it's inside of a box. And he notices a little cardboard sheet starts to glow. And this really intrigues him because there's no way that any light can get from the Crookes tube all the way over there to affect it. So Wilhelm uses the age-old, highly accurate experimental procedure that we all know of as the switch it off, switch it on again method. He's able to confirm that the glowing sheet is being produced by something invisible coming out from the Crookes tube. But what? Like any good scientist, he starts to play. He realizes it can pass through all sorts of things. He puts things in the way it can pass through walls, yet he or nobody else can see it. So he's got this mysterious beam that he decides to just label X because he doesn't know what it is. And it becomes known as the X-ray. Now, what happens next is a little unclear because when Wilhelm Rotgen dies in 1923, he has all of his lab notes destroyed. But we think it happened something like this. Röntgen is so excited that he just can't leave his own laboratory. He ends up sleeping there, eating there, experimenting with this brand new ray that he's accidentally discovered. He soon works out that his new ray can pass through the tissues of the body, but not bones or metal objects. He finds that by using the right kind of photographic film, he can actually use the ray to take an image. And he brings his wife, Anna, in to basically take a photo of the inside of her hand. And so what we get is her bones in her hand, an X-ray with the wedding ring showing as well. And she is so shocked. She says, I have seen my own death. It's only a few months later that Wilhelm gives his first public speech to the Medical Society, performing a live X-ray. The crowd is astounded and news spreads rapidly. This is a brand new phenomenon and it immediately becomes popularised at things like travelling fairs, where people will set up these crude X-ray machines and folks come over and can stand in front of it and get pictures taken of their bones. The public is captivated, and Rotgen's discovery spreads like wildfire. Soon it's being shown off for entertainment in the US, Europe, and across the globe. The medical community starts to cotton on to the idea that there is this device that can see through tissues, and this starts to really become interesting to them. The impact of Rotgen's accidentally discovered X-rays on medical treatment is huge. Within a month of his lecture, medical radiographs, as they were then called, 
had been made in Europe and the United States by surgeons to guide their work. X-ray motion pictures show that as we step down on the ball of the foot, the ankle acts as a movable pivot. Marie Curie is studying at the University of Paris when she first hears about Wilhelm's discovery. Although the mechanism behind X-ray's production is unknown, she's fascinated by them and recognizes their link to her work on a new concept that she's coined radioactivity. In 1898, Marie Curie, using an electrometer devised by her husband Pierre, began to examine all the elements then known for traces of radiation. By World War I, the medical community has definitely cottoned on to the idea that x-rays are useful. And hospitals have these x-ray machines, but they're huge and they're cumbersome. Marie Curie gets in there and says, OK, we need to be able to take these to the front lines, to places where soldiers need them immediately. Along the coast, close to the beaches and ports of each receiving area, there will be holding hospitals, fully equipped for emergency surgery. So she designs these little curie wags, Petit Curie, where she actually puts these small, mobile x-ray machines onto trucks and designs a dynamo that can go in them so that the thing is charged by the movement of the vehicle. Absolutely extraordinarily ahead of its time. Along with the little curies, these vehicles, she's responsible for the creation of 200 semi-permanent X-ray tents at military bases. Those vehicles and tents save countless lives. Now, X-rays in themselves are really great, However, they've also led to other incredible inventions, such as CT scans, which are kind of like an extension of X-ray, but allow you to see even more detail into the human body. So thanks to X-rays, we've made a brave new medical world. But the impact of Wilhelm's accidental discovery extends far beyond looking inside ourselves. We do have a, uh, a few tiles. We started to turn X-rays to the skies above. There's a brand new field in astronomy called X-ray astronomy, and it's allowed us to peer deeper into the universe and be able to understand new things about our cosmos. July 23rd, 1999. NASA launches the most powerful X-ray telescope ever built. The Chandra X-ray Observatory, a really brilliant telescope that was able to observe parts of the universe that we hadn't really understood before. Welcome home, Columbia. Beautiful, beautiful. The Earth's atmosphere blocks most X-rays coming from space. By having an orbiting telescope, we're able to see very faint X-ray emissions. The resolution is so good on this telescope that it's like reading a stop sign from 12 miles away. This remarkable clarity allows us to explore the very hot regions of our universe. Being able to detect X-rays in space has led to so many more understandings about our universe, such as detecting exploding stars, different parts of galaxies, and even black holes. I just think that's, that's really cool. I love how X-rays can be used at sort of on the micro scale and the macro scale. So we're able to learn about the structure of DNA and the structure of the universe. I just think there's something poetic about that. <laughs>